KGVO Missoula, KGVO FM, Frenchtown, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Sports Talk tonight and streaming online at NewstalkKGVO.com. Do I love this show, Denny? Sports oh, Talk your, tonight. It's your favorite hour of the week. It is Gerns and Bedard. Actually, it's only about... 46 minutes with all those commercials or whatever it is so oh no we don't run very many spots well we're, uh, we're almost a full hour man we're not the uh, u.s olympic coverage on nbc no, no we are not oh that's good we're we're striving but uh, no that's good sports yeah. talk tonight girls. we also think we're podcasted but we don't understand <laughs> and badar live from the kgvo studios remember we are streaming worldwide on news.kgvo.com follow us on twitter at sports talk back who knows what this is, Denny, but apparently we are we are podcasting online at newstalkkgvo.com. Yeah. I thought we were YouTube auto audioing, but um, well, anyway, the the point is we do save Sports Talk Tonight. If you go to newstalkkgvo.com, if you just type in Sports Talk Tonight, a whole uh, a whole menu of them comes up. Um Finally got my act together on that, and I, I think we've been putting every week's in there for at least a couple of months. So, like you didn't get enough of us already out yeah. there in Radio yeah. Land. Yeah, I wouldn't go back and listen to me, but heck, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm not everybody. You know, it, it's that's a, that brings up something funny, <laughs> Denny, because people have asked me over the years with doing the Grizzly games and you know, uh, calling all those big hits from Shan Schillinger. Oh, by the way, he is our guest tonight, sitting right next to us yeah, live oh, in the, the studio. Way, yeah. uh, former Montana Grizzly, Atlanta Falcon, and current uh, coach for the Montana Grizzlies. Uh, but anyways, on to him in a little bit. Um, they'd ask, hey, do you ever go back? Do you, do you listen to the games? I mean, do you listen to yourself? And I'm like, you know, the only time I ever listened to myself was when I got in a little bit of trouble for saying a bad word. In Idaho State, and I still couldn't hear me say it, but apparently mm. somebody in Kalispell did. Uh, I, I sort of remember that. Incident. Yeah, and I, I might have been Gene Peterson or something that called me in, and yeah. and uh, I, anyways. Yeah. But no, I don't listen to any of that. But uh, I'm sure we're we're lovely on the air, Denny. I'll bet I'm I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, even even I get tired of hearing me. So. <laughs> On, on commercials and whatnot. So. <laughs> as long as nobody else is tired of hearing you. Wait, you get really, when you want to get really tired of hearing yourself, submit an entry for broadcast awards because you have to keep you know editing and, and replaying and doing it over and over and over again. Or you could change your voice like this. Yeah, you could do that too. I well mean, done. Be somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Denny, uh, I don't know if anybody heard, but the big grizzly news of the week was the UM soccer team. Yeah, Montana soccer team. Uh, they came away. With season opening wins over Oakland, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies, by the way, weird, NCAA tournament team a year ago, and Purdue of the Big Ten. They went down to West Lafayette, Indiana, and played in this tournament. Oakland being from Michigan? It's the, yeah, it's, okay, the, it's okay. the Michigan Oakland. Sure. The, the Golden Grizzlies and, uh, and the, the Boilermakers. And so uh, today the Grizz got a, uh, rewarded for their 2 0 start. It's a first for the program under Coach Mark Placoris, who's in his sixth year. A regional ranking. Montana is ranked number ten in the Pacific region in the first ranking of the year by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. And you think, well, boy, that's a that's a lot of words there. Kind of dilutes it, doesn't? Well, that Pacific region is made up of teams in the Big Sky, Pac-12, and Mountain West, and the Grizz are ranked number ten. Uh, just right behind a bunch of no names, Gerns, <laughs> Stanford, UCLA, California, Arizona State, USC, Arizona, Washington State, Washington, Colorado, and then you got Montana. Wow. So, uh, yeah, not not a bad way to to get the season started for Coach Placoris. We'll no. have to we'll have to get him in here as well. No, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And yeah. uh, and the uh, Lady Grizz soccer team has uh, you know been mainly up over the years since they've derived. Heck, they started the program back when I was in school, so they've yeah. they've been around a while. Yeah, and uh, and they also had an exhibition win. They they beat Alberta uh, one zip in an exhibition match, but. I don't know. You factor that one in. I, I think they shut out Oakland, and I think Purdue only scored one goal. I mean, they're not they're not scoring a lot of goals themselves, but uh, they're they're limiting their teams and uh, getting just enough done to win. Well, and I think if you ask Shan Schillinger uh, what wins championships, defense, so. it'd be it'd be defense. Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. Uh, and we'll ask him I that like in a little another bit. Another Shan Schillinger reference. I yes, like how yes. you worked that in there. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, I I watched something on TV the other night that was really awesome. But did you get to watch some Olympics? On the last in the last week, I did not. You didn't. I did not. I, I, you know, I was just, I was kicking myself for basketball. I forgot basketball championship today. Yeah, but no. 
quite cool. I think we won 121 gold medals. It was it was a lot. It was it was a record number of medals won. I, I mean, ju- and 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 or, we or the the largest margin of, of, of medal wins from between first place and second place. Who was what? China. I yeah. Think. Something like that. Uh, you know, Russia saying, is saying, well, a third of our team was gone, but I, I don't, you know, it might have been a little tighter, but I don't think that would have made that much difference. Well, and and, and, and the, the U.S., they didn't even really do as good as they should have done in the track and field. Yeah, there was the, a couple. There, and there, was a, there was a few there. You, you just, you know, kind of kind of like the basketball team, you just assume victory, mm-hmm. which isn't right, but you, you do. But then there was a few other sports, you know, where, where they, they stepped up even more and some, Balance things out. I mean, some some all time oh. greats as far as the U.S. goes. Uh, Simone yeah. Biles uh, wins five medals uh, in gymnastics. Uh, Katie Ledecky, uh-huh. I believe, uh, sweeps her events or whatever she did. Michael Phelps, twenty nine medals. Yeah. Uh, Usain Bolt. I mean, just a lot of all time greats were. Who's crowned. going after? Uh, uh, somebody's given Wheaties a run. You know how Olympic <laughs> athletes always show up on Wheaties oh, boxes. Yeah. Well, uh, they've signed a bunch of those Olympic athletes. I want to say on Special K. Ah. It's a competitor of, of Wheaties, so a bunch of those Olympic athletes are going to be on. Uh, is that like what the Russians took, Special K? <laughs> special K? Yeah, but the K is backwards. Oh, okay. Because it's Russian. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> hey, well, Denny, what do you got there? I'd, I'd love to jump to trivia. You want to so get we, to trivia? Let's, yeah, because I want to get to Shan. Shan is, Shan is patiently waiting for us here, so let's get to trivia. He's got some film to break down, i sure. 721-1290 if you... Uh, if you know the answer to our trivia, and we are brought to you, of course, by Fuddruckers, world's greatest hamburgers. Whatever you order off that Fuddruckers menu, whether it's the beef or the buffalo or the elk or the, the, the chicken, the fish, you get to go top it yourself. They've got a couple of prep tables there you cannot believe. You wouldn't uh, just about anything you could imagine to put on your burger at Fuddruckers on North Reserve. You can take them with you, too. They'll, they'll supply the, the beef and then you cook it up wherever you go. It's got that special seasoning in it and the buns and all the toppings you need. you got the, the tailgate party. Those are coming up, of course, for Grizzly Games and all that. So ask about that at Fuddruckers on North Reserve. From Brent and the crew at Happy Days Car Wash, they're back as a sponsor of Sports Stock tonight. A gift card for a deluxe car wash at Happy Days. You can use that at either of their locations. They're on Brooks across from the Dairy Queen. Also on Brooks out by... Fairbridge Inn and Suites. Recent name change there. I got to remember to say Fairbridge. So, anyway, 721 1290, if you know the answer to this week's trivia. Well, uh, Gurns were only a week and a half away from the opener of University of Montana Grizzly football as the Grizz get ready to host the Red Flash from St. Francis University of Loretto, Pennsylvania. By the way, I was sitting watching the scrimmage on Saturday and some people behind me. We're saying now, where where is this Saint Francis from? But I, I didn't want to be one of those nerd fans that turned around and told them. <laughs> I just let them figure. Yeah, you know, they they Googled. I'm sure, but they're from Loretto, Pennsylvania. Red Flash. But the Grizz uh, have not played a lot of Saints in their history. We have to go back a few years to find the last Saint Montana played. Was that A Saint Thomas, B Saint Louis, or C? St. Mary's. The last saint Montana played was that A, St. Louis, I'm sorry, A, St. Thomas, B, St. Louis, or C, St. Mary's. Looking for the correct answer at 721-1290. St. Thomas of Minneapolis, if I'm correct. Then. There's probably a bunch of St. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, call in for that trivia answer. Change your life, change your tax bracket with those prizes. Wow. And when we come back, we will have Shan Schillinger from the Montana Grizzlies. When we come back, Sports Talk Tonight, Gerns and Bedard. Now back to Missoula's Sports Talk Tonight on KGBO. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. Tonight brought to you in part by Orange Street Food Farm, the locally owned and operated grocery store featuring the freshest fruits and vegetables, fresh meats, and a great beer and wine selection. And by Grizzly Liquor, located downtown next to the Iron Horse. Big Sky, big selection, and online at grizzlyliquor.com. Danny, Mm. I do believe you have a a winner. Yes, sir. We got Mr. Garth Reby on the telephone. How you doing, Garth? I'm good this evening. How are you, fellas? Oh, we're great. Thank you so much for being part of the the Sports Talk tonight, gang. We appreciate that. You bet. You bet. Uh, are you planning to take in the ball game a week from Saturday? I've got my tickets in hand. Oh, a boy. <laughs> well, a week and a half away, the countdown's on for Grizzly football. We are ready to host the Red Flash from St. Francis. 
Grizz have not played a lot of Saints in their history. We have to go back a few years to find the last Saint Montana played. Was that A, St. Thomas, B, St. Louis, or C, St. Mary's? What do you think, Garth? Um, that would be C, St. Mary's. We go back to 2001, a national championship season. I bo- yeah, I yeah. remember the game, I believe. Mr. Schillinger was probably a little itty-bitty Baker Spartan dreaming of Grizz glory. And, uh, and, star- <laughs> and speaking of stars, quarterback John Edwards, he's out with an injury. Enter backup QB. You know this one, Gerns? By- Brandon Neal. a boy. Tosses five touchdown passes in a 49-19 to win over the St. Mary's Gales, who have since uh, they've dropped football, concentrating more on basketball, basketball. And, and recruiting kids from Australia with last names like Della Nueva Vadoba Gaboda, uh, you know, kids like that. So, And i got to thank Chris Walderskirchen because I got to thinking about this. I said, okay, we're playing St. For- you, you, a lot of people know Chris Walderskirchen, oh, yeah. and, and he used to do a, a really fun factoid uh, trivia con- a trivia article in the Missoulian and and just a good dude. And so I contacted him. I said, I figured if anybody would know this, Chris, you would give me give me the last time you played a saint. And, you know, an hour later, I've got I got the whole scoop. But, uh, yeah, so thanks to Chris for helping out on that one. Yeah, St. Mary's is the answer we're looking for. Garth, we appreciate you listening to the show. I've got your mailing address, and we will get your prize package mailed out to you, all right? All right, I appreciate it. You guys have a good evening, and uh, next weekend, go Grizz, huh? All right, thank you, buddy. Garth Reby, our latest winner there, Garth. Wow, very cool. Uh, listener fun. number 23, I believe, we're up to. The empire is growing. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, Denny. Really fortunate to have back uh, for the second time on the mm-hmm. show. He had so much fun the first time that he couldn't wait to get back. We've been <laughs> we've been putting him off. Oh, what's the coach making me do this week? Oh, I got to <laughs> talk to those yokels again. <laughs> but uh, welcome back to the show, Shan Schillinger. He is brought to you in part by First Montana Bank, your home for free centennial checking plus unlimited cash back every time you use your debit card online at firstmontanabank.com. Shan, welcome once again, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, great to be back here, and and uh, hope you're not sick of me yet. So <laughs> no, no, uh-huh. we're working on making you part of the house band. Can, <laughs> All right, you can join Eric Tabor and, and Jamie Pinkerton as part of our house band. We we asked them out too many times too. Oh yeah, there you go. Hey man, I don't know if you're as excited as we are. Um, the start of football season is always exciting, um, but it's I'm super excited. Number one, there's there's some new coaches. You get to see Coach Stitt and his uh, club in a, in the second year. You know the 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 green is 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 off of him now, and we have got more new players than we've got like two classes of players yeah. in this one that came in this this year, and it's just uh, it's exciting to see the new kids learn the new names. How excited are you? Hey, uh, I'm right there with you. Um, very excited. It's that time of year. Um, obviously, you know we've been in fall camp hitting each other for so long, and <laughs> and uh, we're excited to, to see a different color across from us. Um, I think everyone can attest to that. But but kind of like you said, we got a lot of new players. Um, and for me, I haven't seen, I haven't been a part of any of them, you know, of the guys that played last year. When the lights are on, I have not seen any of these guys play. So I'm excited to, to be able to see the new guys, but yet also the guys that are returning from last year as well. So it's that time of year. We're excited. Well, and we, we had Mike Farader on a few weeks ago, and he was talking about just as, as far as personality and, and chemistry and, and all of that. Um, I mean, you, you always want that, and you hope that you have that, and, and every every team's going to have at least some. But he was very, very impressed with how you know, how far along the, the, the guys were in, in that respect. Absolutely. Um, I think it, you know every senior gets up every night and gives a speech and hearing their thoughts about the team and uh, – and how close and united we are um, uh, as a, as a group, I feel I feel the chemistry is really well, really good, and uh, obviously that's important. And and we do we do team building things to try to to help that. We always say how you know how can you go put on the line for somebody that you don't know very good, you know. So we put guys from all sorts of different parts of the country and and get to know one another. And and when you have that, um, guys will. You know, you'll want to go out and fight for your. Is, guy is next that a year. long-standing deal? Did you guys do senior speeches in in your careers as well, or is that you know what fairly we, recent? We or? were too busy actually practicing and doing two a days. <laughs> oh boy! During fall, no, <laughs> right. Let Let's get to that real quick. How much different is it from when you were going through doubles in, in Montana? Because it is cha- People might not realize how much how much practice and and stuff like that has changed during fall camp. It really has. Um, and and it hasn't been that long since I mean I guess I'm getting old but it's cool. it's crazy the the amount of 
like you said, two a days. They're 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 pretty much non existent now. And uh, when I was here, it was not the case. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, the one a days were a lot longer. And and not to say that we don't practice hard or people across the country. That's not what I'm getting at. It, but it's the rules have changed, and uh, some for probably better, some maybe not. But but it is like Guernsey said. It's I know even when he when he played, it's probably a lot different. And uh, and. It's crazy to think about that. In, in the NFL, I know that, and and it's not just a, it's not just college, it's not just high school, it's it's the NFL too. It's a year round stay in shape if you want to play kind of a, a deal anymore. So, you know, if 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 you're smart and you want to play, you're going to stay in shape all year round. And it's it used to be you'd come to two days to get in shape. Yep. Now that, that's not the case anymore. And it's funny when when I was playing in Atlanta and we would go on a me and my wife would go on a trip. I had to make it a point to work out. I did, you know. I mean, I was the type of guy I couldn't get behind. Um, but my first year in the league, we were two a days, and it was hard. Um, and then the CBA agreement happened, where they changed it all, got rid of two a days. They had one practice and then a walkthrough, and so that was a huge difference as far as the physical aspect of it goes. And I remember coaches wanted us to wear cleats for the walkthrough, and some of the veteran players said. We're wearing tennis shoes because they wanted to. It was going to be a walkthrough, and that's what they were going to make it. We aren't going to try to increase the tempo and and uh, get at it. But it's really crazy how how the times have changed. Oh, I remember the ice baths and the it was two days used to be. You just prayed that you made it through. Yep, survival I mean, really. mode. Yeah. Wow. As soon as as soon as you went, as soon as that uh, that last two a day practice and you had your last scrimmage and you had the the rookie show yep. and then you got into that game week, it was like. Oh, yep. Not that game week was easy, but it was just like, man, now I can now I can heal. Yep. No, that's exactly right. And I tell a lot of the the freshmen because I was one of them that, you know, we were all there. You know, you kind of wanted to go home, and uh, um, <laughs> and I, I tell them, hang in there. You know, you're almost through it. Once school starts, life will life will get uh, will be good again. So. And back to your question, Denny, did we do the the senior talks and stuff? And yeah, you know. I don't know that it was an every night thing. Um, I know that some, you know, we had a lot of good team leaders when I was younger, and um, and 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 they gave the the speeches and stuff. I don't know if it was a, if it was like a like a this is what we're doing tonight kind of a deal, but uh, but that's pretty cool though. I, that's a, a good idea. What what Stitt's doing there yeah. with the with that kind of stuff. And and Shan, how are the seniors doing at it? Are they are they pretty good? At it? Yeah, I've been really impressed. Um, been really really impressed, and and uh, you know, and, and defensively. Uh, Coach Seymour, we have a thing where within your position groups, we you know we close the doors, turn the phones off, and 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 we we give your life story and say what you want and what state what's said in the room stays in the room and and it's been really neat for me to hear some stories of the guys that 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 I coach because I wouldn't know some of this if we'd not done that and when you hear that um, one player in particular came up to me and said I've been holding a lot of stuff in and uh, so. It's neat, you know. You 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 become closer, and when you become closer, like I said, you're more willing to put it on the line for the guy next to you. So it's amazing what happens when both players and coaches buy into Absolutely. what's going on. Yep, no doubt. Yeah. And 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 Mike talked about that a little bit too. I guess that was the week you were on vacation. You get a chance to hear that. But I, I asked him. I said, "Well, you keep talking about uh, the camaraderie among the players. You're very impressed with how strong the fellowship uh, is at, at this point. The, that maybe that was." Oh, I don't want to say lacking, but well, yeah, I guess it was lacking, maybe a little bit last year. And I said, I, I assume, Mike, that that has to carry over to the the, the coaches as, as well. That you guys have got to get along pretty well. And and he just beamed, said, Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we got a we got a, a great staff. It's been I enjoy going to work every day, and uh, you know we got a young staff and and uh, guys that have the same passion that I do. And uh, I've been, like I said, since the day I got here, I've been really, really impressed. Um, as far as the work ethic that people guys people put into it, and and uh, it's been it's been awesome. I've really enjoyed it. We have a great staff, and like I said, I really do enjoy work coming to work every day. Your uh, your second year as a position coach, first year Montana. But uh, do you do you do you get coached by other coaches? Do you do you call the coaches that have helped you throughout your college and, and professional career and get little tips and advice from them? Yep, absolutely, all the time. Um, and I will say this is a humbling game. You know, you think you know it, but as there's always something more. And uh, we watch a lot of NFL film. There's a lot of good teaching clips on there, and um, a couple of coaches that I've got connections with that, that have coached me, and and I'll text them and 
and uh, you know, hey, what were you doing on play forty nine verse X so and so? <laughs> and they'll and they'll respond, which has mm. been good, you know. Mm. So um, I've been lucky. I've been really, really lucky to be around a lot of good coaches that that are willing to call me back and text me back and and uh, yes. and, and take time to talk to me. Uh, live in the studio with us, Coach Shan Schillinger. He coaches uh, the defensive backs uh, for the Montana Grizzlies, former Montana Grizz and Atlanta Falcon. And I was laying in bed the other night, and I'm I'm the I'm the guy that's in bed about eight thirty with the TV <laughs> remote and till about eleven. Yeah. And uh, and I I turned on a show that I'd only watched a few other times briefly, and I can't believe that I haven't been watching it the whole time. And that was the hard knocks with the Rams. Yeah. Did they have? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were, Jennifer's been recording that. The hard, did you guys have the hard knocks there when you were? Nope. I missed them by a couple of years. Okay. I was cut by then. So uh, well, <laughs> you retired. You retired. Yeah. You retired. <laughs> but man, I tell you what, I turned that thing and, and it, it makes it even cooler because, okay, you've got, you've got Brandon and Jeff Fisher. Who yeah. Brandon yeah. played here and, and I, I met his dad a few times <laughs> at, at some games and, uh, and and Trumaine's there and Chase mm-hmm. Reynolds and they he Chase, scored, Chase got some scored, nice FaceTime. He on scored that. his yeah. touchdown and I'm yeah. you know and it's it's salty, you oh, know. Oh yeah. Um yeah. but it's real. Yeah. And I was I tell you what, man, I I you know, they, they had one deal where they took all the linemen to swimming pool and they were it was like a they cut practice short and they went and did some work in the swimming pool and you know, towards the end of it these big guys are running around chasing the strength coaches and chucking them into the into the pool and and you know and i'm just like this is exactly wh- what i remember you know in in college and just you know it's all serious but then there's this whole big goof off you gotta have some fun too. too you know but it was i tell you what man i was just i was i was grinning like the whole time every time i see chase run it's like hey Roman. <laughs> you know and, and it was right. and even my wife was watching it it yeah. was really awesome yeah. yeah i don't know if she'd have started recording if it hadn't been for the grizz connection but i'm glad she did because it probably would not have you know occurred to me to to, to watch it or make a habit of watching it because i i asked her i said is this about the rams every week or do they go over she's yeah yeah you know, this year I, it's the rams. I thought maybe they bounced from team to team or something and and uh yeah it's it, it's very interesting it uh, it gives you a very um uh, interesting insight into what's going on. Yeah. yeah, you know they don't. You know you don't see any behind the scenes stuff. All the practices and all. The, I mean it's, it's it's pretty real. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. What do you think? I ask you since this is a big uh, big topic now. Concussions. Um. What's your thoughts on on that stuff and kids, young kids, and yeah, and what have you? Um. You know, it, obviously very serious matter um and not to discredit or not to i guess i don't know how to put it but my only issue with it is i don't know what is a concussion you know what i mean like i'm sure you've been hit where you saw stars and maybe blacked out does that mean you know your concussion that's a concussion but you remember everything and um sometimes yeah you get a little you get a little hazed and you forget what day it is but it, it comes back to you um like i said i don't mean that 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 they're not serious because they are. They're a very serious deal, and, and it's sad to see what some people have gone through. But my only issue is it's it's not like a broken bone that shows up on an x-ray, I guess, as much. Maybe, you know, there's a broken bone. You see it. Concussions are maybe a little more judgmental, I guess, from a mm-hmm. doctor's standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously very serious, but it's, it's always, I think they're a hard thing to diagnose. Mm-hmm. So how many have you had? How many can you play with? All that. That makes it kind of gray for me. I think uh, I think they're doing it right I know that in high school ball now they're going in and, and you're getting baselined. Yep. Where they're where they're yeah. taking a shot. I mean, I went in there to get a cat scan a couple years ago, and uh, wherever it was, and and the guy goes, "You play football?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "You can tell." And really? I was like, really? Wow. And he goes, "But then he goes, I can pretty much tell on anybody where they've had mm-hmm. an injury, whether it's a football player, whether it's a the normal person, whether it's I mean, so that stuff actually shows up." I like that they do the wait, base. Wait, 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 that stuff. What do, what do you mean by that stuff? Uh, what what brain, showed up that he... Brain injuries where you could tell there was that something that happened. Something in the graph. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, that's yep. interesting. Wow. Yep. But the baseline is great because it gives you, you know, where you start out with. And if you do have a concussion or they think you have a concussion, you can go in and get another scan and actually see the damage that's been done. My philosophy on, uh, number one, you got to learn how to tackle. Yeah, oh, no doubt, oh, yeah. no doubt. You know, there's there's proper ways to do things. Um, two, I think back in the day, 
the problem with concussions was is you got one and you stayed in. Yeah. And there was never a proper amount of time to to heal. And then that makes you susceptible to another one. And I, you know, and it just kind of, you know, piles on yep. and, and it gets worse. I also have the opinion that some people's skulls are thicker than others. Yeah. No. And some people are more susceptible. And it just might be that you are more susceptible to concussions and you shouldn't be playing. Yep. No, that's. I mean, it's different with everybody. And yep. like you said, I know I've been dinged one. I, I got, uh, I got trucked on the hard old AstroTurf in high school in a passing league, and I bounced my head mm. off. I don't remember anything for like half a day. Really? Wow. I don't remember ever being sick or anything, but that's, and like you said, you've been, you know, dinged a little bit yep. or, or saw stars or what have you, but I know I've had one, but you know, how many little dings add up to that's, another one? Yeah, that's kind of guess my question, you know what I mean? But you, know. uh, but you, you said it best is... Is you know now when someone has an issue they get them out of the game you know what I mean and I think the equipment's gotten a lot better right. and mm-hmm. uh, and and the last thing you said is is tackling mm-hmm. um you know you got to learn to tackle properly and 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 those are all things that I think have been emphasized a lot which has helped the game oh yeah and you know like and I don't know the statistics and I should but you know they say that soccer players have just as much yeah of a I chance mm-hmm. of getting concussed with heading the ball and. And skiers, and so it's not it's not just a football thing, it's right? A, right. It's a it's a it's an all sports kind of a deal. Well, well. Speaking of uh, hitting, I guess to to start practice and spring drills, you be in the coaching the those defensive backs. We we didn't know much about the the Montana secondary, but haven't watched them on Saturday. What do we know now? Um, you know, I probably like every coach in the country right now. There's, you know, until you see them out in action, you know. But I feel good about the group. Um, I think we've. Uh, We've really improved um, throughout these couple weeks of practice. Um, got some new guys, young guys that have come in and, and uh, have done well. Um, like I said, I sound like a coach right now, but that's really uh, you are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We yeah. understand. <laughs> but but no, I've been I've been impressed, and I'm excited to see uh, um, excited to see people see, see the guys get out in action and play, just like along with all the Grizz fans as well. Hey, let's uh let's take a quick break here, Shannon. And when we get back, let's talk about some of those kids because I want to talk about a few of them that I've seen out there in practice, uh, and uh, for kind of being the I don't want to say weaker positionally on the field of the defense. I don't think that's the case anymore. No, no, I feel good about it. So we're going to talk about those guys and uh, an upcoming St. Francis game when we come back on Sports Talk tonight. Sports Talk Tonight, live from the KGBO studio. Missoula Sports. We are back at Sports Talk Tonight with Gerns and Bedard. Brought to you in part by Neil. Down there at Bell McCall Ford. Great selection of new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs. Great deals on 2016 closeouts. Your locally owned low-cost auto dealer for over 100 years downtown Hamilton. And by Jerry Wessels Tire Center. Locally owned Les Schwab Tire Center provides the best tire value promise. Visit them online at jerrywesselstirecenter.com. Well, Denny. Yes, sir. It's awesome. Football is a week and a half away. We've got the great Grizz encounter tomorrow night yep. down in Karis yep. Park. Things get our way about 5.30. Uh, Coach Stitt will come on at 6.30, introduce um, honors candidates and captains. Then the guys will just kind of, you know, they'll, they'll mill around till about 8 or 8.30, signing autographs. They, they, they always ask that, you know, don't don't ask him to sign more than a couple things because there's so many people that want to kind of oh, yeah. kind of slows things yep. down a little bit. Monty, the mascot, will be there. the The Spirit Squad. So yeah, they make quite an event out of it. It's County cool. lines playing down there. Yeah, so uh, it it should be fun. Yeah, uh, good stuff. Just a good way to to kind of kick off the football season. We're talking with Shan Schillinger here in studio, safety's uh, coach for the University of Montana, and uh, we were talking about not individually, but some of his guys and uh, and like I was saying, Shan. Um, I tell you what, I I see a lot of uh, fast, athletic, and hard hitting guys in the secondary. Yeah, I think we got a good group, um, and I can't take much credit for it because I didn't recruit many of them. So, um, <laughs> but no, uh, and and uh, you know, um, Coach Seymour worked with them last year, so they're well coached guys, and and uh, so I, I feel I feel good about the group right now. Um, and 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 our and our. 
defense, which is common in a lot of defenses, we need high football IQ guys to play safety. You got to be able to get people lined up in the secondary as far as making calls to the to the corners and getting the linebackers, making sure everybody's on the same page, and then be able to adjust to shifts and motions that offenses give you. And and uh, I feel the guys have done a done a good job up to this point, and uh, hopefully we can continue to improve each day. You you guys are pretty deep back there too, aren't you? I, I it's funny you say that because you know. We were talking the other day in the staff, the defensive staff. It's one of the positions we feel really good about depth. We've got really good depth at the safety position, which is obviously you want that at every position, but but uh, it's been good. We've got a lot of guys that we can rotate in, and, and I mean that. I feel good about all of them going in and playing, and I think we can win with all of them. So uh, you got uh, Evan Epperly, uh, Mick Delaney, Josh Sandry, uh, Strong. What's his first? Justin Strong. Justin Strong. Yep. Uh, uh, Yaman Sanders, Jaron Williams. Yaman Sanders, uh, all league last year. Yep. Um, you know he he looks like a man among boys out there. <laughs> yeah. He big, uh, big yeah big safety. I mean he, he he's he's the leader back there. I'm assuming. Yeah yeah yeah. Yaman's a, a guy like I said. Um, as far as high football IQ, he's got it. Um, and you said it, Gerns. He's a you put him in an NFL locker room, he'd look as good as any of them. I mean he's a, he's a big big guy that uh, that can move well for his size so um you know we're expecting a lot of big things from Yaman. um he you know not to get on the injury front he kind of nicked his ankle a little bit so he's kind of sat out a few days as a precautionary thing so um but we know what he can do and and uh and excited about his his uh you know his his upcoming season and not that uh you know you want to tip your hand or anything but who, who's going to be back there next next to him i know that justin strong had been out for a little bit yep um the transfer from oregon state who's Got a ton of experience back there. Um, who, who's looking at uh, next to him? And, and to be honest with you, it's it's something we've kind of still talked about. We've up to this point, it's still open. Um, we've uh, Justin's done a great job coming in. He's a he's come in and, and picked up the system really good. He's a twitchy, explosive guy mm-hmm. that can that will hit you. Um, and, and some of the people who have been around have probably seen that. But I've been really impressed with all of them. Um, Josh Andrews had a great camp. Jaron Williams. Just done phenomenal. Every time he's in a scrimmage, the playmaker. He, yeah, every time he's in a scrimmage, he makes you know he makes a play. Um, he is a Western Washington kid, by okay. the way. Just to let you guys all know that. <laughs> I knew that was just down the road. <laughs> yeah, every, you're right. Every time, I mean, he's he's making a pick. He's. Yeah. I mean, he is, and he doesn't lack for confidence either. No, no, Jeremy. That's funny. You got to be careful <laughs> how, how what to tell him. You know, but uh, he's he's done great. He's really really improved. I'm really proud of the way Jaron's come along. Um, good kid. Uh, really improved. But no, like I said, I. I you know, Evan Epperly and Mick have, I mean, I'm serious. I'm not trying to, they've done a really good job. I've been really, really impressed with them. And like I said, I feel good about six safeties. I don't think a lot of people in the country could say that. No. So I'm pretty lucky. Well, and, and you watch scrimmages like I got to on, on Saturday and, and you hear a lot of the, the same things as that. Well, the, the defense knows every play the offense is running. That's, yeah. that's why it, it, it goes to their advantage. But I'm, I'm looking at that thing and thinking, you know, I, I think this is a, a pretty, pretty darn good offense and regardless if their counterparts on the other side of the ball kind of know the the plays it's still a pretty dang good looking defense against a pretty dang good looking offense they were they were making a lot of things happen even even Brady when he had the ones in there was was looking like didn't quite know uh you know there's a little bit of little trouble reading what they were doing yeah and I think you know one thing we've emphasized a lot is you know in the we want to be able to disguise things more in the in the second or as a defense and when you get that and you confuse a quarterback, that allows your pass rush to get a little more time to get home. And uh, um, and the other thing that we've preached, and us Coach Timo, we, we preach all the time is, you know, playing fast and attacking the football. And kind of sat back and watched the other day, and I feel like our guys are playing fast. I feel yeah. like they're running around. Now, granted, everyone in the country is probably saying that right now, but I really do feel like we've got some athletic guys that can run around. And, and, uh, and with that comes turnovers. Okay, well, now, now does that go back to your position as, as a safeties coach? Because you're talking about uh, the, the safeties kind of being the, the quarterback on the defensive side of the ball there, you know, yelling out things where guys are supposed to be. Does that does that put a lot of extra pressure on on their game savvy? Are, are they the guys that are in part telling these fellows where to where to move around? Or, or how is there? Is that coming from the, the linebacker core? Or where, where is that? Where is that coming from, or is that is that one of the coaches on the sidelines doing that? No, it, it's on the players, and, and – Within our system, you know, we'll you know we'll play a couple different coverages. Yeah. To you know, but you kind of want to make them look the same. 
You know what I mean? You try to, you know, when we're in this coverage, make it look like this one. So just to kind of confuse a quarterback, and and that kind of takes everybody, uh, I shouldn't say everybody, the D-line would kind of be the exception, but the the back seven, they got to all be in tune, you know, yeah. and, and uh, primarily the safeties because you see rotation from safeties, single high or two high. That tells a quarterback a lot. So we got to be good in the, in the disguise aspect of it. I, I got to be that the I got to believe that the the players have to love a system like that, though. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. And you give them some freedom. And now, granted, you got to be careful how much freedom you give certain guys. But right. well, and, and in a perfect world too, to like you're saying about disguise and stuff. You know, if you got two safeties deep, and they come out in trips, or they come out in doubles, or they come out in quads, it'd be nice if you could keep those safeties there the whole time. And then, right, you know, with the snap of the ball, then you're breaking, then yep. you're dropping, then you're, then you're doing it. And the sheets that they give out, and offensively, I, I, you know, remember these. You know, if it's first and ten, you know, and they come out in, blah blah blah, you come out in doubles, then they're running this coverage in eighty percent of the plays. Yeah. So you know, hmm. you know, as the defense wow. and as an offense, kind of what the, what the other team's going to do. That's why it's really crucial to keep it. To keep it disguised because, I mean, like you said, confusing the quarterbacks, the name of the game. Absolutely. And I remember my last year in Atlanta, the defensive coordinator was Mike Nolan. Um, it was That was how you were graded. It, that He goes, I coached offense for a lot of years. And he goes, I know when an off quarterback sees single high, he's going there with the ball. You know, So we got to be able to try to hold our looks, mm. kind of like Guernsey said. So. It's an important part. Now, you can't get carried away with it. You can't disguise yourself out of a play. You know, you're trying to look, make something look like something. And you, when Cooper Cup's on the outside. And- <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be late getting there, you know. so. But, yeah, it, it's, it's something that we've we got to continue to work on. One of the units that I assume safeties do have to work pretty close to uh, with is um, uh, defensive backs. And you talked about the depth at safety. It looks like that's coming along pretty good at the DB position, too. Yeah, the corners have done well. We've had uh, – um, a couple of new guys that have that have joined us, um, but I, I feel good about them as well. They've um, we've been relative knock on wood relatively healthy with that crew too, and um, you know they've uh, picked up what what Coach Hall is telling them, and and uh, I, I I like where we're at there. Um, obviously, people are kind of familiar where we're at with J.R. Nelson. He's going to be out a few games, which hurts because he's he's a difference maker, um, but. You know, we'll be fine. We feel good about the guys that – Ryan McKinley's had a really good camp, a guy that's played, and and uh, Markel, Markel Sanders and T.J. Reynard is an addition from Wisconsin. So there's been some guys that uh, that have really came on and, and starting to become their own, which is which is good to see. You know, it's funny. When uh, when I was playing Coach Flugrad, he liked the defensive backs. He was the receivers coach. He liked the defensive backs better than his own receivers. And I don't know if you're like that too be- because he had – guys oh j- yeah because he was sick of us because he was yeah, with us all the time coach so. guys like you and so he liked it yeah <laughs> he did but uh it's gotta be it's gotta when your guys do good against our offense it's gotta make you feel good because when i look across the ball at those wide receivers i see about a dozen guys of all different shapes and sizes yeah. and speeds mm-hmm. i can't believe how deep the receiving core looks as well and that's gotta be that's gotta be good uh, make you feel good about your squad going against them every day. Yeah, and like you said, it's good to it's good to be able to go against different guises of different sizes um, because obviously each body size presents a different challenge. When you have a six four guy, he's got the ability to go up and get a ball, and he's maybe not as good on the line of scrimmage. Whereas you get a little guy, they're a little harder to press and be quicker. You know, so it, it's ob- to be able to face different guys each day in practice, each rep. Is uh, is really good for our guys. So yeah, it's I back in the day we had four or five guys, and, and then you'd put the other guys in, and it was you know it's like the defense just kind of went oh, okay, okay, take a deep breath, yeah, now. yeah. And now it's it's just like you got all these these quick little guys, and yeah, you know, we got five we got five stud freshman wide receivers in this year, and it, yeah. I mean and transfers and uh, I tell you another I thing that would be deep. I assume is advantageous for you, Shan, is that that you're going up against. An offense that that does not huddle; they just just line it up and go. Which means that in in practice, you are probably uh, having to make as as quick a decisions as, as you will all season. I mean, even even during actual games, there, there's not going to be a team that you face 
that's going to play much faster than the Montana offense. That's a great point, and and uh, really beneficial from a defensive standpoint to be able to to be able to do that because what's hard. Um, last year I experienced it at Nebraska. We were a huddle team, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, right. But North Dakota State huddles, and they've won. So we were a huddle team. But when you play a team that goes tempo, it's kind of hard for your defense to to be able to adapt to that. Um, sure. Whereas now, when we see tempo, we see it every day. And, and that's really beneficial for us. And when you see a huddle team, that's easy adjustment to make. You mm-hmm. know, you huddle with them. So um, it's uh, – you're right. It's been great. And and what's hard is a not hard, it's different as a coach, I guess, is you don't really have time to coach between plays at practice. You coach on the film. So we watch mm-hmm. the film, you know. So when there's a mistake that goes on, hey, next play, you don't have time to talk about it, which can be good. Um mm-hmm. so but we get correct it on the film. Wow. So I tell you what, I am uh I am so I, know. I am so looking forward to I've tried to remain calm. <laughs> I was calmer last year. Well, new coach, new system. You know, going to be there's going to be some some growing pains. I'm not I'm not calm this year. I'm just so anxious to to watch them go. Well, if you were to tell me last year that we'd go to the playoffs and be on our third string quarterback, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of the turmoil that w- we went through and finish eight and five, I thought was outstanding. Um, and I'm super excited to see what Coach Stiff and uh, and Shannon and all the rest of the coaches and the players can do this year because, uh, you know, I, you get the question, hey, how are we looking? How are we looking? And I'm like, yeah. you know what? I tell you what, for all the question marks and the and the new kids brought in and the new coaching staffs and all that stuff, I it's kind of like during recruiting season. I don't know how Stitt did it and how all these kids came to the University of Montana, some of them on full ride, some of them on next to nothing. Yeah. But yeah. they've bought into a system, and it's going to be really fun to see how it all comes together. Yep. No, I agree. And um, I feel the players are the same way, that uh, September 3rd can't get here quick enough. And, right. And uh, I imagine our quarterbacks are, are you know anxious to play somebody else other than, than Shan's guys <laughs> and all, all the defensive guys. Too. Oh, man, they picked me off again. How'd they do that? You know? <laughs> well, n- don't uh, – they're, they're sneaky back there. N- all you offensive people out there, don't feel bad because the defense always – Always rules the, <laughs> rules the show during ter, during that doubles since well, the beginning of time. Uh-huh. Just well, how it is. Uh, the, the defensive personnel they've got. I mean, you know, just all all everywhere. Oh. It's uh, pretty exciting. It's gonna it's gonna be fun. And uh, and Shan, we'll have you back on during the season. I oh, promise. I hope so yeah. We wish you uh, nothing but the best. And thanks again for coming and joining us. Hey, thanks guys. I appreciate you having me. Appreciate what you guys do for Grizzly Sports. And uh, looking forward to the season. And looking forward to seeing the fans tomorrow night and and here September third. So uh, that being said, go Grizz. Great job as always. Thanks, Shan. All right, Shan Schilling, Shan Schillinger, University of Montana defensive backs coach. Thanks for joining us. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. We got some stupid and a steal <laughs> on Sports Talk tonight. On KGBO, Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. We're back. Sports Talk Tonight, brought to you in part by CHS Mountain West Co-op, Western Montana source for Cynics Fuel, Feed, Fertilizer, Clothing, and Tack for over 75 years. Thanks once again to our guest, Shan Schillinger, assistant coach uh, in charge of the safeties over there at the University of Montana. He is brought to you, as always, by First Montana Bank. I suppose if you tell guys that uh, your your position coach uh, played a little ball for the Atlanta Falcons, that Im- that immediately gets their attention, you know? One would hope. He also had a, a brief coaching stint at a school. Maybe you heard of Nebraska before he came back to Montana. Yeah, yeah, not a, not a bad resume, a little credibility there. But. And and you know what? Just another in a long, long line of Montana Grizzlies uh, that have, have – have made it to the NFL. When he brought up his Atlanta days, I almost interrupted and said, did we congratulate Croy? I think we did. Yes, we did. Okay. Last week, right. yep. Yeah, Croy yep. Beerman, former Atlanta Falcon, now with the Buffalo Bills, but I thought we did that, but I wasn't positive. Yep, yep. Uh, and Shan, just another one of those uh, those hardworking um, Colt Anderson, Chase Reynolds, Mark Mariani, um, guys that uh, – that, battling for a roster position and just through sheer will, um, hard work, and, and being flat-out good. Uh, they catch on with the team, whether it's special teams or, or whatever it is, and uh, 
Tell you what, uh, a kid from little Baker, Montana, mm-hmm. you know, makes it making it to the NFL. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, very it's, impressive. It's it's really cool, and and just a just a, a yeah. tribute to University of Montana and his folks, and uh, and and the good work ethic yeah. over there. Yeah, just a just a very uh, genuine. Nice guy that uh, you know. I'll, I'll bet you he's got a football brain that that <laughs> j- just goes nonstop and and um, yeah, a, a real good representative of of the Grizz. Right on. Yeah, so we like that. Now uh, on, on the other side of the things, you know, you sometimes have a stupid athlete, which Gr- the Gurns will get to. But yes, I will. Our steal of the week is brought to you by True North Steel, Western Montana's industry leader in quality, manufactured, and fabricated steel products. Oh, now this this is going to kind of tug at the heartstrings a little bit, Danny. This is uh, right. I can I can hear birds chirping and 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 the walls are colored pink now. Wow, a pink hue. I don't know if you remember. Did, did they see that on that brain scan too that you had? Did they see pink walls? And, no, just okay. a, a little tiny bit of gray matter all right. is all okay. they saw on all that right. scan. All right. uh, but you know, we go back to the Olympics. Harken back to the Olympics. Um, I figured there'd be some hearkening to that. Little little Ali Raisman, the uh, three-time Olympic gold medalist for the U.S. Um, you know they win the uh, they win the gold all around this year, and she wins a silver on the floor, and I think she won a silver in another one, and she's won before. Anyways, just cute as a button. Um, she was asked out via video by a rookie tight end for the Oakland Raiders named Colton Underwood. Uh, just wanted to wish her congratulations and tell her a good job. And and the guy had the cojones to ask her out on a date. And uh, and she said yes. Oh. One of his teammates is married to Shannon Johnson, who was on the Olympic gymnastics squad, I think, four years or eight years prior. Anyways, they're supposedly going to double date. And uh, so this guy steals a date. <laughs> With Allie Raceman. So that is my steal of the week. Wow. You took the long path for that one, bud. I, it was, I meandered. Yeah. Steal of the week brought to you by True North Steel, Western Montana's industry leader in quality manufactured and fabricated steel products. Now, let's go on the other side of the coin to uh-huh. the stupid. All right. And uh, my stupid athlete slash team of the week is going to be number three pick this year, Joey Bosa and the San Diego Chargers. Uh, been in a lengthy, contentious uh, holdout uh, ever since the beginning. You know, it's funny. They've got uh, how they redid that last CBA is they've got you know first round picks. They're slotted. There's a there's a you know there's there's a a middle portion there where you can sign for, and it's kind of all laid out. It's not too complicated anymore, and what have you. Um, there's a little bit of language in there that the Chargers don't want to take out. Um, something to do with uh, uh, if he gets cut and signing with another team. He wants more of his his uh, guaranteed money up front. His mom got involved and started, you know, popping off on social media. Um, it's a bad. He has been offered uh, more a higher signing bonus guaranteed than any player in the last two drafts. Um, he'd earned more money in 2016 than anyone other than Carson. Uh, Wince, uh, and it's just a it's a it's a stubborn back and forth, really ugly, almost name calling type of a deal. And it's just like guys, just come together and sign the kid. I mean, it's it we're it's 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 ridiculous how stupid it's gotten, you know. So, anyways, my stupid athlete slash team of the week, Joey Bosa and the San Diego Chargers. You know what immediately pops into my head when when stuff like that happens, and and you know I would I would even uh, bring up your your all time favorite stupid athlete Johnny Manziel yeah. is that. That, what are you thinking? Yeah, who are you listening to? And and if, and if you are making, if you are that much of a problem child before you even ever play a, a down as a rookie, <laughs> what, what kind of mental discipline do you have? Really, how how you know how good of a player are you going to be? And how often do you know players with stories like that? They they flame out. Well, and if and if. You I know, know some of them don't. You know some of them. Another former yeah. San Diego Charger, um, Ryan Leaf. Um, yeah, good example. But uh, you know, let's just say he's going to make five million dollars this year. It's probably going to be more. Um, divide that by sixteen, and that's what you don't get paid for missing a game. 
Right. I mean, so the the the, th- the thinking is is that well, there's no way he's going to continue to hold out because he's going to, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't want to lose those game checks. But hey, you know what? Nothing surprises me anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of over three hundred thousand dollars, if it's five million. Oh, Kyle, Kyle, that's, that's all. Brought his calculator in. That's yeah. all. That's yeah. all. Let's see. We've got to promote uh, well ourselves here in the last uh, minute and a half. Self promotion, love it. Yeah. Well, we'll actually we'll start with the coaches show. Uh, KGVO does air the coaches show, and that begins this Tuesday. Now, what we do is uh, we we do the show uh, live at Brooks and Browns during the noon hour. Everybody's invited down. I'll tell you what, it's a fun atmosphere. Uh, most folks order lunch. You don't have to, but most folks order lunch. And it's a really, really quiet crowd. They're there to hear what the coaches have to say. So it's a great atmosphere. Then we play it back uh, from 6 to 7 on Tuesdays. The only year. officials coaching show of the Montana Grizzlies, yes, by the way. Yes, that's, uh, that's correct. And um, so we, we do that on Tuesday. So the first one of those is this coming Tuesday. And then you and I will be on the air a week from Saturday at 5 p.m. with our first Statewide tailgate show. The Same only thing. official tailgate show of the Montana Grizzlies. That's right. And anybody that likes to think that they have one, well, they're just flat out wrong. Twisty. And, and posers. Twisty. And wannabes. Yeah, posers. I like that. I so, like that. I mean, yeah. I'm just so, saying. Uh, but uh, got to tell you, I'm excited about uh, working with you another season. I am so excited about this. I'm too excited about this team. I got to calm down a little bit. Denny, I don't know if it's going to wreck the chemistry between us. I might actually come prepared one of these Saturdays, too. Uh, no, that would. I can tell you right now, that will wreck the chemistry. Okay, you know, well, I, then I, I'll sleep I want in you and... to show up, as usual, 30 <laughs> seconds before airtime. I hand you a sheet of thought starters. You Let's look, go! You look at it, you crumple it, you swallow it, and then you, you come up with great answers. Hey, so. get down to Access Fitness. Let's get on the treadmill. Sports right, Talk tonight. We'll see you next week, Denny. Looking forward to it.